It's that time of year again. GNOME 3.38 is upon us and it comes with a tons of new features, new settings, new improvements. It will be the default for Ubuntu 20.10, Fedora 33 and will come to Arch based or any rolling release pretty soon right after its release. So let's dive into the new stuff right after this. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community made up of thousands of people and classes that let you learn a new hobby, grow your work skills, or just learn something that you're passionate about. Now the classes on Skillshare are designed for real life. They are not theoretical. You can just apply everything that you learn there in your work life or in your personal life, and that's what makes it great. Now, if you want to learn more about Linux specifically, you could take a class on the command line or on system administration. There are plenty on Skillshare that will help you grow your Linux knowledge. I for one have taken a film lighting class that has improved my video quality drastically. And I'm going to be looking for one on better framing my video shots to make sure that they look more professional and more polished. Now creating your account is free and subscribing to Skillshare annually is less than $10 a month. And speaking about that, for a limited time, if you click the link in the description below, you'll get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So get there and get clicking. Now the main focus of GNOME 3.38 seems to be the shell. The app launcher loses its frequent apps page and now defaults to a multi-paged app grid. App folders are still there, but now they can have pages as well if you have more apps than what could fit in a single folder. The app grid can also be rearranged, meaning you can move any icon to any position you like, which is a lot more practical than using the alphabetical sort order. You can obviously still use the keyboard to type an app's name, and I'd expect most users to work like this, but a little bit of customization can't hurt. To complete all of this, the app grid now resizes with your screen size and displays more icons on larger displays. The tweaks of the shell don't stop there, as you can now hit restart without hitting shutdown first, which is good I guess. And the date menu will also show calendar appointments under the date panel so they are more visible and easier to see. Now talking about the apps, Epiphany, also called Gnome Web, has received the brunt of the work here. It has a new preferences dialog, but most importantly it has pop-up blocking and intelligent tracking protection enabled by default, and it will automatically block autoplay videos with sound. You can obviously tweak these settings if you like. Epiphany also allows you to mute audio for each individual browser tab, and it can import Chromium data. Its built-in reader mode can now be linked to directly, so you can share the URL of a page with reading mode enabled. So sure, the engine powering Epiphany is still lagging behind what Firefox or Chromium offers, but it's getting dangerously close to being a browser I could use daily. Gnome Maps is now responsive, so people using Fosh on their Pine phones will have a great Maps app now. The satellite view now displays labels on the maps, so it can actually serve a purpose now, and Maps has a night mode option that can be enabled or disabled independently of the rest of the system settings. There's also a new welcome app which replaces the previous one that linked to various help pages. It's a lot easier to use and makes discovering the concepts we have GNOME a breeze. Since GNOME 3 is such a big departure from the usual desktop metaphor, I think newcomers will be pleased to have that good onboarding experience. Finally, the screenshot tool has a new interface, although it didn't gain any new capabilities. Now, as usual, GNOME settings has seen a lot of improvements again, and the biggest one here for some people will be the parental controls. I personally won't use it because I don't have any children, but if you do have some and you're sharing a computer with people, then you can enable a child account, which means that you can restrict app permissions, the web browser they can use, the applications they can open, the connection they can use. It's just a great solution to make sure that if you share that computer with a kid, you can restrict whatever it can do on that computer. Now GNOME is also starting to implement the things that we usually found in GNOME tweaks inside the settings. And the first change, which once again I can't show you because I don't have my laptop on me, is enabling the battery percentage. This is a very small tweak that should have been enabled by default and should be doable by default, but it was part of GNOME tweaks and now it isn't. And this work is progressing, so maybe in the future people won't have to install a specific app called GNOME Tweaks, and they will just have to go to the settings to tweak the things that should have been tweakable in the first place, let's be honest. Now you can also share your device's connection with more ease, because on the Hotspots page, you will be able to get a QR code that you can scan and make sure that the other device automatically recognizes that it's a Wi-Fi network. Now finally, GNOME also has improved fingerprint support. You can now register your fingerprints linked to one of your user accounts and use them to log in or to enable the download of new software, or whenever there is a password required, you can just use your fingerprint. Once again, I cannot use that or demo it because I don't have any compatible hardware. I have a fingerprint reader on my MateBook 13, but it just doesn't support Linux, so... Now to finish this tour, there's also a few minor improvements. 
GNOME 3.38 will block you from installing updates if your battery is too low, so it will avoid balked updates if your computer shutdowns in the middle of them, and they have also improved a lot of support for Wayland and full screen applications, especially games, by supporting full screen on redirect. This basically means that the compositor will be stopped while there's a full screen application or full screen game that doesn't use the compositor at all, so it should save performance, GPU and CPU cycles to make sure that when you're playing a game on GNOME on Wayland, you won't have any issues. GNOME 3.38 will release on September the 16th, so probably the day after I post this video. Okay, so this is it for GNOME 3.38. There's minor improvements, a few bigger ones like the parental controls and Epiphany being better as a browser, but generally it's a small update. But I think we need to talk about GNOME in general. GNOME 3 was released in April 2011. It's been almost 10 years since it's been there, and honestly when it was released the reception was lukewarm at best. I for one, didn't like it and didn't want to use it. I often read comments that are saying that GNOME is slow and sluggish, that it's unusable, that the interface just doesn't work correctly, and these complaints might have been valid when it released, but nowadays we need to give it another shot, because after 10 years of constant updates and improvements, GNOME is at a point where it is completely functional and usable if you get used to its desktop metaphor. The sluggishness that people associated with GNOME 3, that probably came from the JavaScript based shell, is now completely eradicated. GNOME just flies, it's fast, it's fluid, even on a virtual machine, it's just, it's just fast. And the applications that once were just very crashy, very buggy, and didn't have many features, are now perfectly fine and usable for the single purpose they serve. Now the metaphor of the GNOME 3 desktop is still the same that when it released 10 years ago. There's still no minimize button, there's still no app menu, but there's an app grid, there's still no visible dock or taskbar. But these are concepts that you can get used to if you spend more than 15 minutes trying to hate it. You just need to get inside this flow, and sure, it's not for everybody. The clean desktop without icons, the minimalism of the apps, the lack of title bars or of application menus, but it's something that you can get used to and that really speaks to a focus on doing work. Now where the GNOME 3 metaphor shines is on letting you focus on getting the task at hand done. The applications can just be maximized on one virtual desktop, you don't need to bother about the tool you're using, you don't focus on the interface, on the theme, on the computer, you focus on getting your job done and that's what GNOME is good at. They let you focus with their simplicity, with their ease of use, they just let you focus on getting the job done. So that's it for this video guys, if you liked it, don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you really liked it, you can click the link in the description below to become a Patreon supporter or join the channel on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!